Welcome back to another show of golf tips. I'm your host and teaching professional, Gary Bauer. On today's show, we'll again visit National Golf Links, a beautiful course to play in South Vienna, Ohio. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Now, this first segment of today's show, I'm going to cover chipping. Chipping is where you save your strokes. You want to get up there close to the hole in one putt. Chip it on close, one putt, save those strokes at the end of the day. Chipping is not hard, but I'm going to show you the basics of how to do that. Ball position. Now, I'm a right-handed golfer. If you're a left-handed golfer, it's just the opposite of what I'm saying. So me being right-handed, I want to play the ball back in my stance off the inside right knee. Ball position, inside right knee. My hands are under my chin. Now that's gonna make my hands out ahead of the golf ball. That is crucial. A lot of people, when they set up, they set up with their hands back here. They're gonna flip their wrists and they're gonna to top the ball. They're gonna line drive it. It's gonna roll across the green. So you wanna make sure the ball is off the inside right knee. Your hands are under your chin. So your hands are gonna be out ahead of the ball. Third, your wrists stay stiff and firm. Don't break your wrist. This is chipping, wrist stay stiff and firm. So it's back and through it with the arms. So what I do, and yesterday and the day before I played in the tournament in Kentucky, and the greens had a lot of undulation. So I get to my ball and I would look to see if it's going to maybe break right to left, left to right, or go straight. Very seldom will you have a, a straight chip shot. So I read the contour of the green. First thing I do, the second thing I do is I pick a spot or an area where I want that ball to land to hopefully let it roll close to the hole or maybe in. So I pick that spot, if it's left of the hole, right of the hole, but it's gonna be short of the hole obviously, to play that break. And that's what I practice to. The pros on TV when you watch them, their eyesight doesn't look at the hole. They don't look at the hole and take a practice swing and look at the hole and take another practice swing. If you can see their eyes, their eyes are Looking at a spot, they picked a spot out where they want that ball to land to let it roll to the hole, and that's what they practice swing to. So forget about the hole, don't look at the hole anymore. Pick a spot or an area where you want that ball to land and hopefully let it roll close to the hole or maybe in, who knows. So I've got a spot here. Now I'm gonna use this 56 degree sand wedge to chip with, why? I have a downhill slope to the hole or the stake here. It's gonna break a little bit left to right. Plus, I'm less than 20 feet from the stake. Now, later on when we do pitching, I'll use a pitching wedge. But when you have a short shot like this, it's okay to use a, a sand wedge. But again, I've gotta pick that spot where I want that ball to land and hopefully let it roll up close to the stake. So I pick my spot, I'm gonna take some practice swings. My wrist will stay stiff and firm. And it's just back and through it with the arms. Again, ball position inside right knee. If you're a left-handed golfer, it's just the opposite of what I'm saying. Hands will be out ahead of the ball. Wrist stay stiff and firm. I pick my spot. I think it's gonna break a little bit from left to right. Okay. There we go. So I pick my spot, pretty much hit that spot too. It's always good to take you at least one practice swing, two at the most when you're chipping or even out on the golf course. Don't practice swing yourself to death taking four or five practice swings. By the end of the day, you're gonna be pretty tired. So take that practice swing. My wrist will stay stiff and firm. Ball position inside right knee. Pick my spot. Right there. Okay, good. Now a lot of people when they, they chip, they wanna help that ball up. And when they come down, they straighten up. They pull that left shoulder up and they top it. They line drive it. Let your arms do all the work. You don't need to help the ball at all. Just let your arms do all the work. Keep your wrist stiff and firm, back and through it. Let's take a practice swing. Me two practice swings there, ball position inside right knee. My hands are out ahead, head of the golf ball. That might hit it. Oh, there's a hole there, it would have been in. All right. Now, some people, when they chip, 
They hit behind the ball. What are they doing wrong? Well, what they're doing, they're going down after. You don't have to go down after the ball. Let your arms do the, all the work. The club will come right back to the ball, and with the loft and the line on the club face, it'll pop the ball up. So you don't want to do this if you hit it fat or heavy. Don't drop that right shoulder and hit it fat. Just back and through it with the arms. So ball position again off the inside right knee. Hands are under my chin. Wrist stay stiff and firm. Oh, just nicked it. I see some people, some of my students, when they come for lessons, we, we go on to practice uh, green and we take those balls out, drop them down, we take some practice swings, and I say, hey, you know let me, what, let me see you take some practice shots here. Don't hit the ball yet, but let me see some practice swings. And this is what I see a lot. They'll do this. Why? If you hit a chip shot, it's going to go over the green. Always make your practice swing like a real swing. So if you're going to that stake where I'm hitting to today, Try to make the practice swing the same way. Just back and through it with your arms. It's no full swing, obviously. So my wrist stays stiff and firm. Hands are under my chin. Ball position back in my stance. Right there. Okay. All right, let's hit one more shot here. Just let, letting my arms do all the work. I'm not trying to help that ball up. Pretty good. We'll be right back with more golf tips. Welcome back. Now, in this next segment, I'm going to cover pitching. There's a difference between pitching and chipping. And the difference is you have a further distance to the hole, but with chipping, you keep the wrist stiff and firm. With pitching, you break your wrist. You hinge your wrist on the takeaway or backswing. Now, I've changed clubs. I'm going to go to a stake that's about 25 feet away. Still have a downhill slope on this green. I think it's still going to break a little bit left to right, but I'd rather roll the ball to the hole, then fly it. So now I've grabbed a pitching wedge, a 52 degree lofted pitching wedge. Again, I play the ball back in my stance off the inside right knee. If you're a left-handed golfer, it's just the opposite of what I'm saying. My hands will be under my chin. So ball position inside right knee. My hands will be under my chin. So that positions my hands well out ahead of the ball. You do not want your hands back here. You'll flip your wrist. You'll top the ball, you'll line drive it. So your hands are ahead of the ball, the wrists stay back and through it with the arms, the wrists stay a little stiff on the takeaway, but then they hinge, they break, okay? Back and through it. So the difference between chipping and pitching, now I'm going to cover pitching, is I will hinge or break my wrists. So again, I get to my golf ball, I look at the contour of the green, I think it will break left to right. Now I pick out a spot where I want that ball to land. Again, I practice swing to that spot or area. I no longer look at the hole, but I practice swing to a spot or an area where I want that ball to land and hopefully roll, roll close to the hole. Again, I will hinge my wrist, this is pitching, on the takeaway. So when you bring the club back, it'll come back straight a little bit. Your wrists are stiff, but then you hinge and right on through it, okay? You have gotta stay down. Nick the grass under the ball. If you pull that left shoulder up, you're gonna to top it. If you drop the right shoulder, you'll hit it fat or heavy, okay? So I've got my pitching wedge here, ball position inside right knee. Take a practice swing or two. I pick my spot out where I want that ball to land. Back and through it with the arms. Right on line. So on the takeaway, I hinged a little bit. Didn't keep them stiff, I hinged a little. I broke the wrists a little bit on the takeaway or backswing. Okay, and took off a little bit. 
Not bad. Now, a lot of my lessons, they'll come for, uh, people will come for lessons. I'll say, how far am I supposed to hinge my wrist? How far am I supposed to bring that club back? Well, I don't know. Some people are stronger than others. You have to figure that out yourself. How far to hinge your wrist, how far not to hinge your wrist. But again, you must pick a spot or an area where you want that ball to land. Also read the contour of the green. It's going to break right to left, left to right, or go straight. Pick that spot. Hopefully it'll land there and roll up close to the hole. So take that practice swing. Hands the wrist a little bit. Right there. Okay. And these greens here at National Golf Links are extremely fast, so I'm not hitting it too hard. This course is always in great shape. Got my spot picked out. Right there. Okay. And again, that's the key is you try to pick a spot or an area where you want the ball to land. When you take your practice swing, don't look at the hole. Don't take a practice swing, look at the hole. Take a practice swing, look at the hole. No. Look at the spot. You practice swing to a spot or an area. So ball position inside right knee. Hands are out ahead of the ball. I will hinge my wrist a little bit. This is a pitch shot. Right there. And notice how my body stays still. You're only using your arms when you chip or pitch. You're not trying to turn into it, try to help that ball out there. You don't need to do that. Let your arms do all the work. Okay. One to two practice swings at the most. Okay. All right. And the key is I want to try to brush that grass under the ball. Just nick the ball, the grass at the same time. It'll pop it up a little bit, but more importantly, it will roll to the hole with this pitching wedge. And again, this is pitching, so I am going to hinge my wrist a little bit on the takeaway. Now, if it was a full shot, say the hole was about 50 feet away, then I would break my wrist more. I would hinge my wrist more. But this green, green is extremely fast. It's downhill a little bit, so I don't need to hinge my wrist a whole lot. Just enough to get some snap into the ball and pop it up here and get it to roll. Okay, a little heavy on that one. Now, I didn't mean to do that, but actually, I dropped my right shoulder a little bit. Hit behind it. Hands the wrist. Okay, let's hit one more here. See if we can get it close. Oh, right there. Good shot. We'll be right back with more golf tips. Thanks for watching. Now, in this next segment of today's show, I'm going to hit one of the hardest shots in golf, and that is chipping with a hybrid out of some heavy rough. It's not hard to do once you have the proper fundamentals down, but it's a very tough shot. Why do I want to use a hybrid out of heavy grass? Well, usually with a sand wedge or a pitching wedge, a lot of people will hit it fat or heavy, and the ball doesn't travel at all. With a hybrid, you can get some roll on it. The club comes down to a steeper angle, and hopefully you can get up there closer to the hole. It's an easier shot, but it takes a lot of practice. It's a tough shot. So again, I've got a hybrid. Where do I line the ball up at? Just like pitching and chipping, you're going to line the ball up back off the inside right knee. If you're a left-handed golfer, it's just the opposite of what I'm saying. Your hands are always below your chin. That puts your hands out ahead of the golf ball. Hands under the chin, 
hands are out ahead of the golf ball. Then you can come down at a more descending blow to pop the ball out of there and hopefully get it close to the stake here. How hard do you swing? A lot of my students, when they come for lessons, they say, how hard am I supposed to swing? Well, I don't know. Some people are stronger than others. You have to figure that out yourself. But once I get to my ball and I see it's in a little bit of heavy rough here, I read the contour of the green. I want to see if it's going to break left to right, right to left, or go straight. Very seldom will you have a straight shot. There's always a little bit of break in greens. Second, I want to pick a spot or an area where I want that ball to land and hopefully get it up there close to the hole. So I've got a little bit of heavy rough here. Got my hybrid, going to play it back my stance off the inside right knee. Going to keep my wrist stiff and firm. This is a chip shot. Remember pitching, we hinge the wrist. Chipping, you keep your wrist stiff and firm. So let's take a couple practice swings here. How hard to swing? That's a guess. Back and through it with the arms. Okay. And the key is stay down. You must hit that grass under the ball. Let this club head do all the work. Again, keep the wrist stiff and firm. I have the hybrid back and through it. Let the club head do all the work. Okay. That pops it up a little bit, it gets a little bit of roll. Again, it's a lot easier to hit this shot using a hybrid out of the heavy rough versus that pitching wedge or a sand wedge. We'll take that practice swing, ball position inside right knee, wrist stay stiff and firm, back and through it with the arms. Okay. And again, how hard do we swing? I don't know. Some people are stronger than others. You have to figure that out yourself. But it's not a hard shot once you have the proper fundamentals of technique down. Wrist stay stiff and firm, chipping with a hybrid. Ooh, almost. Okay, and as you can see, it's not a big backswing at all. This club head, that ball will pop off this club, fit, club head and it will roll, it will take off. It'll pop off up the club face and hopefully get some roll, get it close to that old hole. This is pretty good. It just breaks off there to the right. Got played out there more to the left. Not bad though. It really takes off the club face. So I mean, it will pop off the club face and, and roll for you. Try to play a little bit more break that time. Not bad. A lot of one putts there. That's what you want to do. You want to get it close to the hole and hopefully one putt. Save yourself some strokes at the end of the day. So again, wrist stay stiff and firm. Let that club face come through. It'll pop right off that club face and hopefully roll up there close. Hands right ahead, wrist stay stiff. A little bit more break. Okay. This shot takes a lot of practice. It's just a, a shot that sometimes you will have to use if there's some heavy rough just off the green. And it's not a hard shot. Just have to get the right fundamentals down. Okay. A little heavy on that one. Got a little bit too much grass. My right shoulder dropped just a little bit. See so if we can get one up there close now. Play that break. Wrist stay stiff. 
Ball position inside right knee, back and through it with the arms. A little firm on that one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's hit one more shot here. Got the hybrid, ball position right knee, hands right ahead, wrist stays stiff and firm, and again, I'm hitting out some heavy rough. Add the line, a bit harder, not bad though, not bad. We'll be right back with more golf tips. Welcome back. Now in this last segment of today's show, I'm going to cover putting. With putting, it doesn't matter how you stand or how you grip the club, but you should have your head, your eyesight directly over the golf ball and bring that putter head low and slow, straight back, straight through it. Now I tell a lot of my students, the newer golf balls have little arrows on them. Those arrows are on the golf ball for a reason, to help you with your alignment. So you take the arrows on the golf ball and let's say you thought it was going to go straight in. You'll take the arrows that form a straight line on the ball, line them up with the line or the dot on top of the putter, and you aim those arrows straight at the hole if you think it's going to go straight in. But let's say you thought it was going to curve right to left, ah, two feet. You'll aim the arrows two feet to the right of the hole. That's how you get your alignment. Now, how hard to swing? Well, that's a guess. A lot of my students say, how hard are we supposed to swing? I don't know. Some people are stronger than others. But keep your wrist stiff and firm and bring the putter straight back and straight through it. Now, with this number of golf balls, I'm not going to bend down and line them up, but I'm going to show you how to keep your head, your eyesight over the ball and bring that putter straight back and straight through. Now, down at the Cove in Florida, Cove Golf Course in Florida, I take a lot of my putting lessons off of Kathy, the director of golf at the Cove, and she's helped me quite a bit with my putting. She's got my putter head low and slow, straight back, straight through. Sometimes I would bring it outside the line, but now I bring it straight back, straight through it. Okay, the wrist stays stiff and firm. My head, my eyesight will be over the ball, and you bring that putter straight back and straight through it. Okay, and see how I follow through, that's the key. You must follow through. So I know it will break a little bit left to right. My head, my eyesight will be over the ball and I'm gonna drag that putter head straight back and straight through it. Right there. And that's the key, follow through. A lot of my students, I see them when they come for lessons, I say, hit a few putts for me. And I'll see this. They jab at the ball. Well, that's not gonna work. When you watch those pros on TV, they come straight back and straight through, they follow through. But again, you can stand any way you want, grip the club any way you want. Some pros, they go left hand low. Some do the claw grip. That's totally up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. But have your head, your eyesight directly over the ball. Use the arrows on the golf ball to get your alignment and come straight back and straight through it. Now I like to have my hands up high so that putter head is sitting flat on the ground. Got it. Right there. Okay. a little bit to the right. Now those should be one putts. I'm getting it close to the hole and that's what you want to do. At the end of the day, you won't have those strokes way high. Your scorecard is not going to look like a disaster. Score is not going to be to the moon. Try to one putt, two putt the most. I tell a lot of my students, uh, if you have a putt over 20 feet, just get it close to the hole. If it goes in, it's a bonus. Anything under 20 feet, hey, that's a makeable putt. 
you know, who knows, it might go in. But don't put that added pressure on you each time you get up to putt and think, oh, I've got to make this putt, I've got to make this putt. You don't want to do that. It's just straight back, straight through it, head, eyesight over the ball. And bring that putter head low and slow on the takeaway. Okay. And you follow through with it, back and through. Right there. And those would be a lot of one putts. There was a hole there, they would have been in. Some of them would have been in there. That might have it. Yep, there's another one. See? Straight back, straight through it. My wrist stays stiff and firm, my head, my eyesight's over the ball, back and through it. Now a lot of golfers, when they putt, when they putt, they follow the ball, don't move out. If you move out, you're going to block it or push it right. Keep your head still. That might have it. Right there. Hit it. Held off a little bit. Just held on me. All right, one more here. Got it. Right there. There we go. So with putting, it doesn't matter how you stand or how you grip the club, just have your head, your eyesight directly over the golf ball and bring that putter head low and slow, straight back and straight through it. We'll be right back with more golf tips. Well, that concludes today's show. I'd like to give a shout out to Cindy, Mike, and Louie Neff down at Brown's Motel in Aberdeen, Ohio, and thank Mary for having us here for another show. Join me next time on Golf Tips with teaching professional Gary Bauer.